able to prove it. Stand to your feet. Now you got to smile. Grin like a possum. You cannot sing this song sitting down. Okay? It's impossible. 413, stand up, stand up for Jesus. You soldiers of the cross, lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. First, second, and fourth verses.
thank you so much for him and his dear wife. We ask that your blessings will just be, be given to them, Lord, that your guidance will be given to them, Lord, as they lead us here at this church. We pray for our tithing and giving, Lord. Help us to be faithful in giving back to you what you so faithfully blessed us with, Lord. We uplift our, our deacons and trustees. We ask that you um, work through them, Lord, as they um, do their part to lead this church, Lord. We pray for our building program, Lord. We ask for the, the swift sale of this property, Lord, so that we can quickly get out there on that land. We uplift Blair Construction and Mike Maracas, who are handling all the details, Lord. Just be with them and be with every aspect of the process. We pray for eternal broadcasting. We thank you for everyone who utilizes that ministry, Lord. We pray, Lord, that it will continue to grow each and every day, Lord. We pray for the WTBI broadcast in South Carolina, that you'll continue to work through it, Lord, that the gospel will be preached and people will be saved by hearing about the a saving blood of Jesus Christ, Lord. We uplift Believers Bible Institute. Continue to use that ministry in a mighty way, Lord. We pray for it to grow every semester. We uplift our Sunday school and teachers. We ask that you just be with them. Bless every teacher, Lord. Help us to each and every one who are regular attendees to do our best to invite people to Sunday school so we can um, continue to grow. We pray for our youth ministry and our children's churches that you'll bless them. We pray for the three young ones who are going to sing tonight, Lord, that you'll just be with them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Just take any stage fright they have away, Lord, and work through them in a mighty way. We pray for Tuesday Bible study, that that ministry will continue to grow and bless it. We pray for the peace of Israel, that you will just bless them and keep a hedge of protection around them. We uplift our president, our nation, and our economy, Lord, and ask for your hand of guidance upon each one of them, Lord. We pray for the coronavirus outbreak, Lord. We pray that here coming up soon, Lord, that we won't even have to mention the name uh, coronavirus or COVID on our prayer list. It'll be eradicated, Lord. That's our sincerest prayer, Lord. But we pray for everyone out there, Lord, who's been afflicted with it. You'll just touch their body, Lord, and heal them completely. We pray for the ongoing conflicts in Iran, Iraq, North Korea, Afghanistan, and Syria, Lord. We pray for um, our military around the world. Some may be in these um, nations right here. We ask for their protection, Lord. Just be with them, Lord, in each and every aspect of their life. We pray for our visitors and new converts, for the new converts. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you'll just um, help them to stay faithful to you, Lord, and um, just help us to do our very best, Lord, to um, minister unto them, Lord, and just help to keep them faithful, Lord, and strong in you. For our visitors, Lord, we help, ask that you just be with them, bless them, help us to um, make them feel at home, Lord, and help us to continue to invite folks to come here to uh, Timberlake Baptist Church, Lord, to hear the preaching of your word, Lord. And as... Um, we speak of the preaching of your word, Lord. We come to the portion of the list for those in need of salvation, Lord. We ask, Heavenly Father, that each one of these folks will um, come to a saving knowledge of Christ before it's eternally too late. We pray for Joyce Abbott, for Nick Albino, for Carl Amos, for Brandon and parents. We uplift Rachel Bowen, Jackie Bryant, and Ashley Cobb. We pray for Tommy Connor and Jamie Connor, and Crutchfield and Clinton Davis. We uplift Bobby Dalton, with, uh, who also has cancer, Lord. We pray for Terry Deer, who also has cancer. Touch their bodies and heal them, but most of all, Lord, touch their hearts and save them. We pray for um, Robert Durr, Lester Dawson, and Michelle Doss, as well as Joel Dutton. We pray for Heather, Jesse Horvitt, and Brandon Godsey. We uplift the Horsley family, Jimmy Jones, um, Mike Keene. Um, Caitlin and Billy Keene and Stephen Keene. We uplift uh, Ryan and Tyler Kinder, Buster Lewis. Uh, we pray for um, Eston Lewis's co-workers. We pray for Sean McCall, Chase and Haley Minter. Uh, we uplift Darren Moore, Danielle and Michelle Owen, as well as Bradley Payne, Margaret Poston. We pray for Mark Reagan, Brian Reagan, uh, Caitlin Sanchez, Victor Sanchez. Um, we uplift Sean and Bobby Stout, Kimberly, Madison, Madeline and Megan Thompson. Uh, Dustin Turner, we pray for Buddy Travis, Jessica Wood, Tommy Vincent, and Les Young. For those who need to draw back close to you, Lord, and get back into church, we ask that conviction will fall upon their hearts, Lord. We pray for Connor Barnett, the Cleary family, Buddy and Carol Galden, Cassie and family, as well as DJ and Chelsea, and Gary Graham and Kirsten McBride, Jonathan Reed and Troy Simmons. A great number of health needs on our list tonight, Lord. We know that you're the great physician, Lord. There's no illness or sickness, Lord, that um, you can't heal, Lord. And we ask this um, request for these folks, Lord, for their healing, Lord. We pray for um, Irene Bell, for Vicki Burnett and her heart. Be with Dallas Bowen, Gracie Clark, Jack Dale with some upcoming surgery. We ask that you be with every aspect of that surgery. May it go flawlessly. We pray for, pray for uh, the health needs of Gail Dale, uh, Tony Dalton, who has seizures. We pray for Terry Davis with asthma. We uplift Linda Durham, uh, Joyce Earp, Vicki Farmer and her health. Be with Amy Grafton, Faith Ann Holly with her knee and foot, Wayne Hodges, who's recovering from surgery. We pray for his complete recovery. We uplift uh, Sean Horbitt Sr., Audrey Hoskins, and Maureen Johnson. Be with David Jones and his blood pressure, Gail Jones and her health with Beverly Keenan and upcoming surgery. 
We pray for that also to go flawlessly. We uplift uh, Angeline Merriman, Shelby Martin, Gary McCollum, and Gladys Milan, as well as Betty Mitchell. Brother Toby Moore, help him with his knee and his leg. Be with the health needs of Stan and Shannon Moorfield. Nancy Newton, Bobby Nichols with asthma. We pray for Loretta Nichols, Angie and Billy Oaks, and Alfreda Patterson. Be with Sarah Piotta, who's recovering from cataract surgery. We pray for Vince Piotta and his health needs. Alan Cheryl Podobinski, Ann Pruitt and Gary Salmon. Bonnie Rains and Steve Rains, as well as um, Robert Reed and Vicki Reed and her back. Uh, be with Cindy Rutherford and her health needs. Nat and Barbara Saunders, uh, Mike Smith, Bill Snow, Judy Snow and above some back surgery. Let it go all flawlessly. Carol Tickle and her back. We pray for Leslie Tickle, Ricky Toller and his eyesight. Ken Vipperman and Angie Vipperman. We uplift our Landon Walker. We ask that you just touch him in a mighty way. Be with Anita Warwick with her foot and back. Leon and Connie Wiles, we pray for Lois Witt, the health needs of Harold D. Yancey, Ryland and Betty Yates, and Amy Young, Lord. And we also want to uplift the, the needs that were made uh, known tonight, Lord. We pray for Mike McBride, who is sick at home. Be with my special unspoken request. Be with um, Angeline Merriman and her doctor's appointment tomorrow. Donnie Aaron in his back. Be with Robin Jones, who's on the ventilator with COVID. Just touch her body and heal her. Carolyn Brummett with COVID also. We ask for her healing. We pray for the family of Crystal Toon, that you'll just wrap your arms of love around them at this time, Lord. Be with Annie Cleary and Raymond Cleary and meet the needs there. Jensine Honeycutt, Lord, with COVID also. Touch her body and heal her. We pray for the special unspoken of Sister Angie Moore, that you'll see to that need. And touch Taylor Alderman, who's sick at home tonight. Let's just be with her, Lord. We ask these things in Christ's name. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again, Father, for the opportunity to be in your house tonight, Father. We, as we continue our prayer list, Father, we want to lift up those people with these that have diabetes, Father. Pray you be with each one of these individuals. Be with their families also, Father. Be with Ron Allen and Sherry Bray, Logan Saroma, uh, Debbie Eagle, Vicki Miller, Kendall Oaks, uh, Rod and Lee Range, Liz Thompson, Danny Warwick, and Wendy Yancey. We pray, Father, you help these individuals to keep their blood sugars under control, Father, and they may be out working for you, Father. We pray for those also, Father, with COPD. Touch these individuals, Father. Help them with their problems, Father. Be with Pamela Dabbs and Mike Mills, Sheila Richardson, and Amanda Watson. We also lift up those, Father, in the nursing homes around the best. Pray you be with each one of them. Wrap your arms of love around them tonight, Father, and be with them. Be with Dale Leflin, Ohio, at Rowan Eagle. Be with Catherine Collins, Susan Dooley, Curtis Martin, Ruth Newman, George Thomas, Dinah Wagner, and Francis Robertson. Barry Hill in South Boston, be with Ruby McKee and Chatham Rehab, be with Vidal Crane, Michelle Johnson and Gretna Rehab, be with Eva Wiry and at Liberty, be with Kyle Baldwin, Baldwin who has pneumonia also. We pray you touch him tonight, Father, and restore his health. Be with those around about us also, Father, with Alzheimer's and dementia. We lift up Ronnie Durham and Mary Malone. We also pray for our college students, Father, who are away from us. We pray you'll touch each one as you keep them safe as they do their studies, Father. Be with Taylor Alderman and Becca Clarity. Uh, Darius Goods, Trinity Langley, Joanne Jennings, Dakota McBride, Caleb Moore, Stanford Wells, Casey Woodson, Mary Sue Woodson, uh, Tori Underwood, and Christine Yancey. We pray, Father, for our many friends and family and neighbors that have problems, Father. We pray you'll touch each one of these individuals, Father. Be with Lisa Baxter, Austin and Vinnie Begley, Eddie Bowman, Carolyn Brummett, Raymond Cleary, Earl and Jean Connor, Amy Ferguson, Jesse Flack, Toby Hines, Mary Heiss, Robin Jones, who's on a vent, uh, Emma Kinsey, uh, be with John and Linda Mitchell, uh, Chelsea and Danny Martin, Benny Montgomery, Donald Owen, uh, Betty and Dale Ray, Dolores Simpson, Shirley Shire, Glenn and Nancy Slayton, Tim and Shelby Smith, Alan and Shirley Taylor, Florence Richardson, Jack Rutherford, who's having back surgery, be with Brenda Wilson with a melanoma, also be with Colin Watson and Jerry Wilson. Preston Watson and Jack Wheatfield, who's recovering from a stroke. We pray, Father, you touch each of these individuals, restore their health, Father. Be with the families as they look after them, give them the strength they need for each day. And, Father, for those roundabouts with cancer, we lift them up to you tonight, Father. Pray you'll take the cancer away from their bodies, restore their health, Father. And I'm sure they'll give you the honor and glory and praise that you deserve for that. Be with Joni Atkins and Portia Atkins, Chris Agee, Bobby Alley, David Bale, Tom Barley, Robin Baker. Uh, Calvin Bryan, Scooter Barton, Pam Carter, Tammy Cox, Barbara Clarkson, Bill Cooper, Ann Dales, Pat Dalton, Brenda Davis, Melody Dickerson, Thomas Dix, Kellen Dunn, Michelle Esterline, Mrs. Tom Farrell, Jeremy Ferguson, Marie Follis, 
uh, Tammy Fries, Amanda Gladder, April Golden, James Griffin, Sherry Grundy, Michelle Hall, and Red Hardy, Whitney Hawks, Karen Hilton, Anika Hodnett, James Holt, Pamela Hudson, James Hunley, Janice Inman, David Law, Jason Long, Dan Mays, Linda Mahanos, Joseph Miller, Billy Joe Moran, Karen Nations, Tony Phillips, John Rice, Paula Newmerger, Marie Nestor, Ruth Patterson, Floyd Poindexter, Tasha Ritchie, Daniel Sheets, April Roberts, Patricia Robinson, Neil Rogers, who was Robin Stallings and Cindy Sawyers, Dorothy Thompson not doing well, Tammy Toller, also we were Jess Waller, Waller and Guadalupe Wally, uh, Margaret White, Frank Wilkerson, Ann Williams, Dave Wilkinson, Albert Wilson, Maggie Wilson, and Kelly Wood. Again, Father, touch these individuals, restore their health, Father, and bring them back into the fold, for we ask these things in your name. Our Father in heaven, as we continue to pray, Lord, I pray for Ezekiel, who is that sick at home, just be with him, touch him, Lord, I pray for the several unspoken that are here, that you just answer and meet their needs, Lord, I pray for Beverly Barker, Jessica Barker, Jenny Barrett, Skylar Bowen, Bradley Gotze, Chad Gotze, Manny Graham, Allery Hamlin, Sean Teresa Horvitz, Janice Hodges, Katie Van Hunt, Eston Lewis, Joshua Lindsay, Tina Lindsay, Shelby Martin, Angeline Merriam, Mike and Diane Mills, Angie Moore, Kelsey Moore, Sarah Piotta, Bonnie Raines, Daisy Nick, Fitzpatrick, Daryl Tickle, Glenn Tickle, Mike Tickle, Eileen Tickle, Anna Vipman, Evelyn Wallington, Matthew and Chi Williams, Tony Woodson, Vicki Reed, Daniel Roach, Sean Patterson. Lord, I pray you be with me and Teresa as far as the director of uh, missions, Lord. Just help us to continue to stay on top of it, Lord. I pray for Bethel Baptist Mission, Eddie Atliff, Randy Ashcraft, Govinda L, Emmanuel Bala, Filatino Duritez, Evangelist Earl Clarkson, John Mavis Coleman, Mike Sue Cook, Stan Cullen, Keith Cullors, Joseph Del. Chris DiGiacomo, Faye Dykes, Vanzel Snow and Polly Fry, David Gibbs, Virgil Galen, Jimmy Harris, Larry Henderson, Adrian Hernandez, Lewis Howell, Patrick Hubbard, Frank Kinsey, George Kinsey, Nestor LeBlugin, Bobby Lee, Jimmy Long, Sergio Mahanos, Ernie Mills, Nathan Miller, Dr. John Mitchell, Tamara Mock, Alan Nye, Mike Patterson, Mike Peacock, David Rawson, Ken Reen, National Pastor of Cuba, National Pastor in Pakistan, Evangelist Jeff Worley, Dan Richard, Che and Elizabeth Roberts, Demetrio Rodrigo, Roloff Ministry, Jason Sorbo, and David Weiss. Lord, I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Lord, we continue with the prayer list tonight. Lord, just pray that you'll be with all those that are pastors and evangelists uh, in Virginia and around us. We support, Lord. Just pray that you'll give them the words to bring the gospel. To a lost and dying world, Lord, just pray that you'll be with uh, Jamie Adams, Joe Arthur, Bobby Brooks, Melvin Campbell, Kenneth Cloud, Jeff Chapman, Scott Dean, Carlton Duck, Chris Esterline, Larry Fitzgerald, Jerry Flanagan, Jerry Foley, Donnie Glass, Frank Gooch, Mike Harp, Jason Holly, Wayne Hudson, Larry Johnson, Stephen Kennedy, Buster Kinsey, John Kinsey, Derek Kaiser, Tim Kaiser, Terry St. John, Steve Lamb, Joel Logan, Carol Martin, Dave Peters, Dan Schelling, Davey Shelton, Mark Snowden, Donnie Stevens, Philip Stout, Brian Warren, and Jeff Woods. Just pray that you'll uh, put your hand on them, Lord, use them in a mighty way to spread the gospel to a, a lost world, Lord. Uh, pray that you'll also be with all those that are uh, actively fighting COVID right now, Lord. Just pray that you'll... Um, uh, be a healing hand on them and help them uh, overcome this virus and this illness, Lord. Just pray that you'll especially be with Becca Clifton, Faith Ann Holly's family, Timothy Farmer, Nancy Jennings, Kathy McCullough, Lisa Pierman, Brian Phelps, D. Seabock, Fred Seabock. Uh, just pray so much that you would uh, heal them, Lord, and bring them back to their families and uh, get, them, get us through this time of COVID, Lord. Just pray that you also be with our churches we have a revival in at the end of october again in november lord just pray that you'll give us a renewal here in the church and uh, let us be on fire for you lord just pray that you'll be at the fall youth camp coming up on october 15th and then also the kingdom kids activity october the 23rd lord just pray that you'll continue to bless this church we ask all these things in jesus name amen amen <clears throat> All 
All right. Well, since we've taken care of prayer time in a good fashion, we want to have a few announcements um, coming up before I believe Brother Jamie is going to be back up here to lead us in a song. I want to remind everybody about a lot of things we have coming up here at Timberlake Baptist Church. If you're part of the Christmas play, there'll be play practice once again this coming Monday at 6.30 p.m. The Needhams will be here with us October the 24th in our 6 p.m. service. Looking forward to that. They are always a blessing. Uh, Tuesday Bible studies at 11 a.m. studying in the book of Hosea. If you're free on Tuesday mornings, make your way out. I promise it will be a blessing. Um, fall Youth Camp coming up um, October the 15th to the 16th. You can sign up with Ken Ripperman today for that. I want to remind everybody about Pastor Appreciation Day coming up Sunday, October the 10th. And our fantastic fall drive through story time will be Saturday, October the 23rd from 5 through 8. Of course, I'm pretty sure you all notice that big old green box out there in the vestibule. Um, it's good to see. It's about half full of candy this evening. We're going to need to fill that thing up quite a few times over. Amen, preacher? So, um, get some candy to these kids, but we don't want to all just give them just candy. We're going to give these kids Jesus Christ and the message of the gospel. Amen? So, as always, once again, as, um, we have... 2022 is already at the bottom of our bulletin right here. Just This year is flying by. So I'm um, being prayer and preparation for everything we have going on here at Timberlake Baptist Church. And I can promise you, just as God will honor our prayers as we pray tonight, he'll honor those prayers as well. He'll work through us in a mighty way, and that's what we all want. Amen? So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Brother Jamie, and he's going to have a song before Brother Sean comes with our mission letter, I believe. All right, let's all get a hymn book that stand and turn to page number 407. We'll sing the first, second, and last verse of Faith of Our Fathers.
help souls be saved and lives changed. And we'll thank you for all you're going to do before you do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. May be seated. are not to be mentioned in the church. 
But boy, is that the problem today. I was so blown out of the water the other day, I was watching uh, an interview with T.D. Jakes on the internet. And I, it just blew me away. He was defending homosexuality and lesbianism. And uh, he was saying that, uh, that nowhere in the Bible did Jesus ever speak about homosexuality and lesbianism. I don't know what school he went to, but they didn't teach him much. Am I I'm by myself in here tonight? I mean, I, I couldn't believe what he was saying. When Jesus said that it was to be one man, one woman, one lifetime in, in the New Testament, he clearly stated that homosexuality was wrong. It's unequivocally a sin. So we're to mortify or deaden these things, and we're to subdue these fleshly desires. We must personally kill these desires in our life and put them to death, not allow them. If you do not fight these things, they will overwhelm you and they will overtake you. That's a fact. If you do not deaden sin in your life, it will choke the spiritual life out of you. It will put the Holy Spirit in the back seat and put your flesh in the front seat. The Bible is clear. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called. Now let me stop and say something very quickly. A lot of people try to say here this is a justification for work salvation or holding on to the end. That's not what it says here. It says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, then comma, whereunto thou art also called. In other words, it's not talking about you in the previous phrase. In the previous phrase, it's talking about the people you're going to lead to Christ. God intends you and I to be soul winners. The month of October, we got one month to revival. Can you believe one month? Already revival's on us, four weeks away. Our theme for this revival is going to be each one, reach one. Each one, reach one. That's our goal during this revival is to get somebody to come to church with us and see them get saved or see them get right with God if they are saved and not following the Lord. Each one, reach one. Because God intends us, and he says so right here through Paul, that um, you're already saved, but lay on, hold on eternal life for others and has professed a good profession before many what? People are watching you. I had a man in my office this afternoon. He said, I can't believe how many people's watching me. He said, people said that my testimony was a blessing to them. And I, I couldn't believe people were looking at my life. I said, I've been telling you for 20 years people are looking at you. Whether you know it or not, people are watching your life and your testimony every day you live, everywhere you go, where you work, where you eat, where you shop in your family. People are watching you. This must be a willful act from the heart and a heart of love for God or will never be accomplished in your life. Let me tell you how you accomplish deadening or mortifying these sins in your life. Love the Lord with all your heart. Love Him. Put Him first. Love Him with all your heart, soul, and mind. We must every day work on our relationship with God and we're, if we do that, we'll keep our relationship with God fresh and vibrant and powerful. If you don't keep your relationship fresh, vibrant, and powerful, it will die on you. Now listen to me, Christians. Y'all are the cream of the crop tonight. Good night and good, good crowd tonight, too. Say amen. You're a good, good group tonight. And I know I'm preaching to the cream of the crop, but I want to warn you. I want to warn you. No church is above dying. There's no church above losing the power of God. Your laurels don't work in the spiritual world. What you did 50 years ago will not sustain you today. What you do today will sustain you today and tomorrow. You have to keep your relationship with God fresh. You've got to keep it vibrant. The earthly desires that draw and drag us away from the affection, direction, and protection of the good Lord are there around us every hour of every single day trying to draw us away. The flesh is indeed wicked, 
and it's vile. And if you don't work on it, if you don't subdue it, if you don't mortify your flesh, it will overcome you before you even know it's happened. It can happen that quickly. To follow the flesh is to walk the pathway of doom and destruction. I see so many Christians following that pathway. They think they're spiritual. They think they're smarter than everybody else. And they must think they're smarter than God because they don't have to obey the Bible like the rest of us do. They got excuses for not obeying God's word and doing it God's way. And then when they get in trouble and they end up on the highway of doom which leads to the bypass of destruction, they want to come and run to the preacher and have him put their life back together. I've got news for you. It's too late then. Amen or oh me. We'd better be working on our relationship with God. Stay off of that pathway of doom and destruction. The Lord can help us suppress these desires by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. But if you don't keep the relationship close between you and the Holy Spirit of God, the devil will creep in. And the Lord will help us if we'll allow him to. Paul list four very serious sins that we need to avoid and subdue in our lives that will dominate us. And fornication, first of all, is the wild. This is a wild world we live in today. It is as wild as I've ever known it. And the Bible is very clear. Fornication is any sex and all sex outside of marriage. Now, I don't know what school Mr. T.D. Jakes went to, but where I went to school, Dr. Harold Wilmington told me that any sex outside of a man marrying a woman and them staying together for their lifetime was fornication. It's sin. And if they break their vows, that's adultery. Plain and simple, Paul makes it very clear here. When we participate in any sexual activity outside of marital relationships, we enter into the land of consequences. I hear this more than anything. Well, homosexuality and lesbianism can't be wrong. It can't be wrong to have sex before I get married because we're not hurting anybody. Well, I hate to tell you that's a mental problem. What do you mean, preacher? You're not right mentally. You're not thinking straight. What do you mean, preacher? Every time someone commits homosexuality, lesbianism, or sex outside the bonds of marriage before you're married, you hurt your Savior because you disobey his commandments. Don't tell me that you're not hurting anybody because you are. And you know what the Bible says? That if you dishonor the marriage bed, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. So, you know, this, this, all this thought of I'm not hurting anybody what I'm doing. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're not only hurting you, but those who are living around you see you do it, they're going to go do it. But you're not just hurting God, you're hurting other people who are watching you in your life. Hebrews 13, 4, marriage is honorable in all. I'm preaching ahead of myself, so amen. And the bed undefiled, but whoremongers, listen to this, whoremongers and adulterers, whoremongers are those who are in the world I talked about of premarital sex and of homosexuality and lesbianism. They're the whoremongers, and the adulterers are those who've been married and wouldn't stay within the marriage bounds and went outside of it. They're adulterers and adulteresses. Look what God says. Somebody needs to send this to T.D. Jakes. I might do it myself. God will, what's that word? Judge. Judge. Not Walter Yancey, not the pastor, not the deacon, not the Sunday school teacher, not the pope. But say, God will judge. Then there's the tainted, the un uncleanness. Uncleanness is physical or immoral impurity. When we start dabbling in things God calls impure, we are tainted by that sin, no matter what it is. It is a taint on your life. I told the Bible study Tuesday, we have this idea there are big sins and little sins, no such thing. All sin is sin and breaks your relationship with God. 
Consequences are different. You go out and murder someone, used to be in the state of Virginia, you get executed for it. The Bible says that's what should happen. Consequences for murdering someone is your life is taken. Now, if you go out and you tell a lie, I don't think they ought to execute you for it, but they ought to punish you for it. But whether you murder somebody, you lie, you still sin and broke your relationship with God. Those sins hurt the Holy Spirit. They grieve, the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of promise, whereby you're sealed to the day of redemption. He said you're sealed to the day of redemption to remind you he's not going anywhere. He's not going to get mad and run off because you sin. He's there. He's got to put up with you. Grieve him. You hold him back. You stop him from working in your life. If God's going to use a child of his as a servant, he's going to choose the most valuable and the purest to do his work. Now, if something tainted is impure, then it's less valuable than that which is pure. Amen? And folks, I want to tell you something. God's looking for pure people, not to save them. They're already saved. If they're saved, he's looking for pure servants to use them so the Holy Spirit will have 100% capacity and control in their life so God can do something through them. I see a lot of people who are trying hard, but they're trying hard with one hand and with one foot they're in the world. And they wonder, well, God's not blessing what I'm doing. God must not be in it. Maybe it's not God's, the fact God's not in it. Maybe you're not in it. Because you're not willing to be pure in order to do what he wants you to do. Tainted servants are unusable. And because they're unusable, they're unprofitable. The sad part for every pastor at the judgment seat of Christ is finding out how many of their servants were unprofitable servants. Not faithful. The Bible says you're required to steward that a man be found faithful. First Thessalonians 4 7, for God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Romans 6 18. Being then made free from sin, you become servants of righteousness. It didn't say slaves to righteousness. It said servants, because we're serving God. And we're not wasting our time. Amen? This letter, sitting right up here, that I wrote, I read Sunday morning from that family, that uh, who, it's Landon's family, this letter, this card right here, shows that our work is profitable. We're making a difference in the lives of those children, and we've blessed their parents. That's what we're here to do in this community, is to be servants of righteousness, to impress people that our God is the God to follow. Our Savior is the real Savior. And then it says in verse 19, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. He said, you're all people. And there ain't nobody in here perfect. Now, I know Jamie Cole thinks he's perfect. But I've known him for 22 years. He's a good guy. He's a hard worker. But he's far from perfect. He said, amen, I'm going to have to get that on tape so I can play that back to him one day when I need to. But James is not the only one that's not perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. And you better watch around your doorstep, sweep around your doorstep, because that's all you got time to do. If you judge other people, you're in trouble. Then it says, for as ye have yielded your members service unto uncleanness and to, and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. He says, you were a bad man or a bad woman before you got saved and you went at it hard. He says, now let's go as hard at that working for righteousness as you did working in the sin world. Amen? Give it your best. Like Kevin said a minute ago when he prayed, let's get on fire. Let's get on fire for God. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. These sins, nobody should be committing these sins if you're saved because you've been given the Holy Spirit to keep you from those sins. Now, number one, we see the wild. Number two, the tainted. Number three, the addicted. Inordinate affection. Inordinate affection 
affections are obsessive attachments that become uncontrollable desires in your life. And the devil can use these against you to stop you from being a faithful servant of God that you could be. Inordinate affection is when you take it too far, when it controls you. And you, you can't afford to let any of these sins even have foot in your life, much less control. Addictions in our life drain all the power of God from us and render us vulnerable to the attack of the devil and his demons on our life. And they lead us from the new life that God has given to us in Christ back to the old life of doom and destruction. It drags you backwards instead of you going forward. You go back to the pig pen instead of to the father's house. It's a whole lot better than the father's house, isn't it? A whole lot better at home with father than it is sleep with a bunch of nasty, grunting, stinking old pigs. Oh, listen to me. The Bible's clear. Inordinate affection starts as a choice. You see, the first time somebody drinks, they're not addicted. But once they drink, they can become addicted. Same thing with drugs, sex, gambling. Once you try it, that's a choice. But if you keep going back and doing it again and again and again, it goes from a spiritual choice to a physical addiction. You physically get addicted to it. I've seen people, and this is the truth, in my own family. They get close to a gambling place and they get the shakes. They start reaching in their pockets, seeing how much money they got. They're as bad as that Chrisley woman on Chrisley Knows Best. Y'all don't watch it, okay. She's a gambling trick. That's all she wants to do is gamble. Gamble, gamble, gamble. An old woman, 76 years old, all she wants to do is gamble. And yet she says she's a good Christian. Something don't add up. But she gets near a casino, that's where she's going. Now let me tell you something. If you're a Christian, you can get near a casino and it won't bother you. You can get near the beer section or the wine section in the grocery store and it don't bother you. Why? Because you haven't made that choice. But if you make that choice, it could become an addiction very easily. A spiritual choice turns into a physical addiction. I've been by the bedside of many an addicted person on their deathbed dying, mourning that alcohol, mourning that fix of drugs, dying because of the choices they made. You see, Matthew 12, 44 says, then he saith, I will return to my house from which I came out. This is talking about after you've been saved. You're going to go back to the old way, the old house. And when he cometh, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. And then he goeth, uh, then goeth he, and taketh himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked, what? To get saved and to go back to the pig pen and stay there? Oh, the Bible's clear. Oh, it's going to be worse than as if you'd never known God. If you're saved, you won't go to hell when you die, but you'll go to hell before you die. That sin will drive you mad. It will drive you crazy. It'll destroy your life. It'll cause you pain and heartache and sorrow if you just stayed away from it and never went back to your old way of life. That old way of life is not what God saved you for. He saved you from it. Amen? He saved you from it to free you from that old way. And he gave you a Holy Spirit to give you the ability not to fall back and become addicted in inordinate affection. Number four, evil concupiscence, the prohibited. Evil concupiscence is longing for what's forbidden. And I don't care who you are in this room tonight, you deal with evil concupiscence. You want things you shouldn't have. Somebody says, why are you send Wendy in the grocery store? Because my evil concupiscence is in that store. <laughs> I can send Wendy in that store with a list, and she'll come out. She'll come back with one or two things more than's on the list, but most of the time, she comes right back out with whatever I had on that list. 
if I go with her. It's bad. She'll spend twenty or thirty dollars in the grocery store. I will spend a hundred and twenty or thirty dollars in the grocery store. Because that's my that's the sin which does so easily beset me. And folks, I'm telling you, it's important to understand we all deal with what's forbidden in our life, what we cannot have. We must think on good things and not evil things. We have to focus on things which are above heavenly affection. When we think on wicked things, it keeps us from thinking on the Lord and His Word. We have to work better at being focused on the Lord. You're here tonight. You know why you're here? Because you want to focus on the Lord. You want to leave here tonight closer to God than you came. So when you go back out in the world, you'll be stronger than when you came in. Philipp Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. You'll never find the will of God thinking on wicked and righteous things. You're going to find the will of God that's going to be while you're thinking on God's things. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Listen, you can't understand God. You have to trust Him. Shall keep your hearts and minds through who? Christ Jesus. Who kept Jesus? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lived in Jesus. The dove came down from heaven and landed on Him. He kept Jesus. He, he, he took care of Jesus. If He can take care of Jesus, He can take me or me and you. Me and you. And then it says, finally, brethren, what sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are good, good report? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. That's why you, can, you have to be a teetotaler. I don't care if it's alcohol, drugs, country music, rock and roll music, television, you have to learn to be a teetotaler or it'll swallow you up. It'll draw you away from God. Think on good things. If you're on good things, God's going to lead you right to his will. But the devil puts all these other things in our pathway to get us off track so we cannot find the will, the way, and the work of God. All right, we've talked about four. There's actually five, so I told you wrong. There's the wild, there's fornication, there's the tainted uncleanness, there's the addicted, inordinate affection, the prohibited evil concupiscence. Now, number five, greed or covetousness. Greed. Covetousness is defined as fraudulent exhortation and greediness. America is the greediest nation on the face of God's green earth. And we're raising our kids to be that way. We've got, my, my, when I was growing up and probably when you were growing up, we were taught if you wanted something, you saved your money and earned it to get it. And you worked hard to earn that money to get it because that kept you from being greedy. And it also made you appreciate what you got. Today, most kids don't know what work is. They don't know what work is. Everything's handed to them. And if you hand them everything, they're never going to appreciate anything. And if you don't make them work, they're never going to learn how. When I worked, went to work at McDonald's, they didn't start teaching me how to work at McDonald's. My mama had done, already taught me at home to mow the grass, make the bed, wash the dishes, clean the car. Amen? And that's how we got our allowance. Then she put me to work in a laundromat. And I worked there for Loreen Kidd and Sandra Coffey for a year. And buddy, that was some dirty work. Dollar an hour. One buck an hour, but I worked. Then she had me mowing grass. I mowed big lawns, not little ones. I'm talking about lawns with extra lots beside them. For the grand total of a wonderful five dollars for two and a half hours mowing grass. But I learned to work. I learned that working's not easy. But it made me value what I had. It made me value what I had. And I didn't expect everybody to hand me everything. I learned that I could earn my way. Amen or amen. When you cross the line of prohibited, the wild, and you end up addicted, and the greed of covetous grows in your heart and your mind like a spiritual cancer. The most covetous people I know of, the greediest people I know of, are people who have nothing because they've squandered their whole life 
Every dime they make, they make goes to their sin. And they can't have anything in life because of what they're addicted to. And they can't have anything because of it. And then they go on disability and think they're supposed to have everything everybody else has got. It's not supposed to be that way. You're supposed to be able to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and keep you and protect you from being greedy. Not wanting what you want, but always desiring what God wants. Because you know what I found? Godliness with contentment is great gain. But you have to be taught to be godly. And then when you are godly, you learn how to be content because you know God's going to take care of you. He's never going to leave you nor forsake you. I got to worry about the offering Sunday. Y'all don't worry about stuff, but I do. I got to worry about the offering Sunday because we had a Joe Arthur first Sunday, Smokey Wilson the next Sunday. And then we had John Mitchell one Sunday. And I've done an offering y'all to death. I thought, Lord, this offering's going to be terrible. And so the Lord has a way of dealing with me. I know he don't have to deal with y'all because y'all are perfect. But he has a way of dealing with me. I'm sitting at my desk writing my checks out Sunday morning to come to church. Wrote my tithe check. Easy. Do it every week. On down. Got it done. Then I'll have my offering I'm fixing to write my check for. And I knew we had the group coming. I said, okay. I'm going to give what I normally give. And the Lord said, oh, wait a minute. You said you were worried about the offering. Are you really worried about the offering? Are you just flapping your gums to make me, God, feel sorry for you? He said, I don't feel sorry for you. Write the check for more than you want to. Now, y'all don't argue with God. The Walter does. I said, Lord, I got all these hospital bills. He said, write the check. I know you. You can't lie to me like you lie to Wendy. I mean other people. I know. You can't lie to me. Write the check. So I did. I wrote the check for $40 more than I usually give. So I wrote that check. I put it in the offering plate. Monday, we leave the house. Stop and got the mail. And there was a check, I mean a mail, an envelope from the uh, radiology consultants of Virginia. You ever want to have a triple heart attack? Get one of them from the radiology consultants of Virginia. Am I right, Jamie? It ain't cheap, is it? I took a deep breath and I opened that envelope and you know what was inside that envelope? I checked for $59. $19 more than what I had added to the check the day before. Now the check was wrote last week. Do you think God knew ahead of time? I do. I believe that. And, and, and then I, I started to hide the check, but she was sitting there. She knew I done got it. So I didn't get none of that check. It was gone. But you know what the Lord said? That's okay. Do what you're supposed to do. Go on and say amen. She's trying to be quiet. It ain't going to work. I know better. Hey. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. You don't have to be greedy. You don't have to be covetous. Just, just love him and follow him. Two verses and we're going home. Covetous is wanting what others have and doing whatever you have to do to get it. There are no boundaries or lines a person will not cross to get that which they desire and they want. That's the world we're living in today. Luke 12, 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in what the abundance of things which he possesseth. You know what? We think somebody's something. They got a 25-room house, and a five-car garage, and they got money in the bank, they're wearing thousand dollar suits, going on million dollar trips, and they think, oh, they got it. Life is not in the abundance of things that you have. Amen? Amen. It's the blessings God gives you. Let me tell you something. I couldn't have been more tickled if I would have hit the lottery for a zillion dollars. 
I couldn't be as tickled as I was when that Indian doctor looked at me and said, do you have a direct line to God? How does it feel? You shouldn't even be here. You don't have a gist. You've got a fibroid. Go home and live your life. There's not a lottery that can bless that. See, devil lied to me for nine months. God don't care about you. God didn't appreciate nothing you've done but for 35, 40 years. He don't even care what happens to you. He's a liar. And the snake's in trouble. <laughs> Amen. The snake's in trouble. And I want to tell you something. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation what? To follow that road is a deadly, dangerous drop. I'd rather be on the road of faith, the road of obedience, the road of service, because God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Stand to your feet. Father, I hope tonight I've been somehow encouraged your people to understand at least what those who are backslidden and maybe those who are lost have suffered and are suffering and struggling. And I pray it'll encourage them to go out in the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that your house may be filled so people will be filled with the word of God which is truth and away from the lies of this old world. God, I ask you in Jesus' name. If there's one here lost tonight, they'll be saved. But I pray Christians will come tonight and pray for themselves to stay away from these fine, deadly sins. Or come pray for someone they know is already enveloped and, and being choked to death by these sins of addiction and selfishness. Or maybe they just need to come pray for themselves tonight and ask you, Lord, help me. Help me to not be under the control of these things, but to be under the control of the Holy Spirit of God. Take this invitation. Have your will and way. Speak to every heart, I pray, in Jesus' name. God spoke to you. Please, please, I beg you, come speak to him. I can Savior call. I can hear my Savior call. Oh, it's the sweetest voice you'll ever hear. I can hear my Savior calling. Take thy cross and follow. Follow. Follow me. Follow me. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow.
in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the good preaching we've had in your house tonight, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you'll just help us, Lord, to take this message, Lord, apply it to our hearts, apply it to our lives, Lord. Just let us meditate on it, Lord, and just um, help us to go forward being the best servants that we can for you, Lord. We ask now that you'll just dismiss us in your grace, Lord. Bless us with um, opportunities to serve you and tell folks about you in the coming days ahead, Lord. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for loving us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.